फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट द सिक्स लेन कॉरिडोर प्रोजेक्ट has attracted a lot of comment and some cynicism some have called it a dream adding that dreams are not supposed to materialize into reality i beg to differ and yes it is a dream a 7000 km 6 lane corridor linking silchar in the north east to saurashtra in the west and kashmir to kanyakumari is a magnificent dream a dream for india if you do not dream how will your dreams come true questions have been raised about the financing involving 28000 crore of rupees for a nation that saves more than 300000 crore rupees per year a country that imports nearly 28000 crores worth gold largely for savings has ample resources for several projects of this scale and dimension the north south east west corridor when completed will save 15000 crore rupees a year just by way of petroleum products saved and a like amount in wear and tear of vehicles and life and limb of drivers no taking into account the time saved and efficiency achieved in transportation of goods we have the will and the means and the technical know how to undertake this project and it will move in the direction i outlined in a speech to fiki i would like to remind you that bhakhra dam was viewed as an impossible dream in the early 50s more recently the tunnel under the english channel linking britain and france was considered both a technical and a financial impossibility we will in the near future create financial instruments to channelize your savings and investments in this grand development project there are enormous employment and investment opportunities in india's information technology sector which is the fastest growth segment of india's economy my government is committed to speeding up its growth the first report of the national task force on information technology and software development containing 108 recommendations has been accepted many of the recommendations have now been notified they will remove the bottlenecks that had constrained this sector from growth even faster the second report devoted to strengthening india's hardware sector is with the government it will soon be considered the recently announced policy for internet service providers probably the most liberal in the world will add momentum to india's it growth in the country telecommunications is a vital infrastructure for the development of the economy we have taken a series of measures to open this sector for private investment and provide a level playing field we shall announce a new telecom policy soon to achieve a quantum jump in this sector the global mobile personal communications service has already been permitted and the iridium project has been launched on november 1st as scheduled it is worth noting that out of 4000 crore of rupees foreign direct investment in flow in telecom since 1991 almost 50% has come during this year 
this is an indication of the immense investment opportunities and the improving investment climate in this sector government has often been criticized and rightly so for being long on policy pronouncements and short on implementation we shall endeavor to correct this imbalance time bound implementation of all decisions shall be demanded and obtained government shall enforce accountability for laxity and delay effective interministerial coordination shall be ensured so that important policies are quickly translated into action you shall not find us wanting in this regard the sustainability of economic reforms is crucially dependent on equitable distribution of the benefits of growth we have no doubt that we have to cut through the volumes of complex regulations which we have accumulated over the last 50 years reduce political and administrative interference and allow the innate entrepreneurial abilities of the indian people to flower the need for a leaner and more efficient bureaucracy curtailment of government expenditure a transparent and targeted subsidy regime and commercially viable public sector cannot be overlooked we recognize that increased competition brings in greater efficiency lowers cost of production and provides more and better goods and services to consumers however the government also appreciates that a more market oriented and less regulated regime does not imply an abdication by the state of its responsibility towards the poor and the disadvantaged our policies and programs will adequately reflect both these crucial concerns sustainability of reforms in any country is also critically linked to the popular sport base of such reforms the sport base would be fast eroded if reforms fail to deliver broad based employment generating growth and make a perceptible dent on poverty in this context i am happy to say that reforms in india have indeed been successfully not only in preserving this popular sport base but in strengthening it further in the largest democracy in the world reforms have not only stayed on course but also actually accelerated even with changes in popularly elected governments this is only an adequate testimony to the popular base of reform stop